Hey, it's Marco from Craft Coffee Spot, and today we're going to be talking about the Philips 3200 Latte Go espresso machine. So this is a super automatic espresso machine, so all you need to do is add your beans and the machine does the rest. And there are a couple things that stuck out about this model, and one is really this Latte Go milk frothing system, and then two is just the, the ease of use and the ease of customization for drinks. So let's just go through the design first. And you can see it's a pretty healthy sized machine, which will take up most of your counter. But besides that, everything else is really intuitive. So you have the water tank that actually just slides out from the front. You can just fill it up right by your sink. The drip tray also just slides right out of the front too. And you can see there's the puck container here that you can just empty out. And actually when it's full, you'll get a little notification right when that spent pucks. You have an adjustable spout that can fit you know, small espresso shots almost all the way up to like a big travel mug. And so that's also really easy to use. Bean hoppers right on top, and it's got a nice little aroma seal. And then you have a bypass doser here if you want to use ground coffee. It's pretty common if you want to just have a cup of decaf and the bean hoppers are already full. And then when you look at the display right here, you can see the Latte Go has six drink options. You have an espresso, coffee, Americano, cappuccino, latte, and then hot water. And what I like too is that for each drink, you can even customize different settings. So you can see right here, there's actually three different options, which each have three settings. So you have your coffee strength, you have your coffee volume, and then you also have your milk frothing. And that's just really nice because espresso, it's a very nuanced drink. So depending on the beans that you're using, depending on the freshness, depending just how you prefer the flavor, you're going to want to tweak those different settings. And so I really like that. Also on the inside, there are a couple things that I think are really interesting. So first, you have a ceramic burr grinder. That's actually a pretty good step up for most machines, and the grinder is just as important as the machine itself, maybe even more important. Also, in the water tank, there's this AquaClean filter system. And so the AquaClean filter, if, if you use it, it, you don't have to descale until you've used 5,000 cups of this machine. Now, that's a lot of cups. Most machines, 300 to 400 drinks, you're going to have to descale. So being 5,000, so magnitude of times difference. And that's important because over time, you know, lime scale and minerals build up in the piping. It reduces the water temperature and generally reduces the quality of your drink. So it's a really good build overall, really intuitive, a lot of customization. But let's talk about this Latte Go system, which you can see it's really just this little container right here. And it just clips on really simply. Now, if you break it apart, it's just two pieces too. Not only that, it's just the container and the attachment. And even on the container, there's just a small tube here. And the attachment doesn't have any moving parts either. And really the way it works is you have the steam come in from the machine, use negative pressure to draw off the milk, and everything just aerates in this chamber here and goes right into your drink. And then when you're done, you can just unclip it, rinse it under the sink. It's super easy. I mean, for me, milk frothing tends to be like maybe the most annoying part of making drinks. If you have a steam wall and you have to clean that, it gets very hot. And I usually use a separate uh, milk frother, but this is actually great and really easy to use. So let's demonstrate by actually making a uh, milk face drink on here. So the container actually has settings for a cappuccino, a latte, and a double cappuccino. I advise filling it up a little bit more than it says. So we'll go latte setting just to make sure. Pretty easily just clip it into place. We'll go cappuccino. And then you can see the settings here. We'll go high strength, medium for the coffee volume and medium on the froth as well. Just your spout. And then get it started. Okay, so it, it actually grinds the beans first. And one downside of this ceramic grinder is it is kind of loud. Might not be able to hear it fully, but it's pretty loud right now. So first it grinds, now you can see it's getting ready to steam. Yeah, this is the interesting process to me. So you can see right in this chamber, it's spinning right there. That's like all the aerating and stretching that you can get on a normal steam wand. Then it finishes it off with the coffee, with your milk frothing. As so you can see, we actually get a pretty nice drink here. You can see the distinct layers of the foam, the espresso, and then the steamed milk in between. 
It's a little bit of a small drink. I probably would have made something larger or maybe gone with a latte next time. But what I like is you just get a distinct layer of foam here and a distinct thickness. And it works for dairy milks and non-dairy milks too. All right, so now let's try brewing an espresso with the Phillips 3200. Do a single espresso. Okay. And so actually they didn't take very long. It's maybe 30 seconds or so. And you have a pretty good shot here and you actually have a little bit of crema on top, you can see. But actually this is probably not as much crema as you would normally get for a good espresso shot. And it's interesting because I do notice too, when you when you try drinking it, it has a little bit of a weaker body than a normal espresso. I mean, normally you get espresso because it's just that dense, really rich shot. And, which makes sense because it's a like 1 to 2 ratio of coffee versus maybe 1 to 15 on, on other kind of drift coffees or filter coffees. And so you expect it to be a really bold. But you can see there's just a, a thin layer of crema on top. And it's not my beans either. So I've tried these on different espresso machines that are more semi-automatic. What I found is that the Philips 3200, it, it actually brews really quickly. And so it doesn't really have enough time to extract. And I've kind of wondered about this. Like, why, why does it have quite that body? Why is it a little bit watery and i found that it's actually more comes to the brew group and when you look inside of it you'll see this is like kind of the porta filter and the holes are actually quite large and that just lets the coffee run through really quickly and i think that leads to that kind of weak body that you might get on the phillips 3200 so it's not the grinder this is actually a really good quality grinder but it doesn't have the time to really extract those coffee oils it doesn't create the resistance in the basket and so that is one downside, is that you tend not to get quite as complex of an espresso and other machines. But with some work on this, I figured out a couple of workarounds that'll make your espresso a lot better. It's three things you should actually change. First, you should grind finer. So right in the top, there's a knob with 12 different settings for grinder. And if you turn it counterclockwise, you can go finer. I usually use a three or four setting. Make sure you turn the knob as the machine is running. And that'll help a lot right there. The second thing you can do is you can actually increase the water temperature, just increase your extraction. And you could do this when the machine is turned off, you hold the drink size button. And when the machine is off and you hold that, you'll see three levels. I would turn it to the medium or the high level. And then the third thing you can also do is just make sure you have a stronger drink. So when you do this customization, you can see you want to make sure your strength is a little higher than your volume. That essentially is your ratio. And so I almost always do on the strongest level and I usually do a media level of volume. And if you change that, that grind size, you make sure to change the strength. Then you also make sure to change the water temperature. Those three things will get you a much better espresso than you'll get out of the box. Now let's talk about the different Philips Latte Go options. So Philips actually makes five different models of this machine. It goes from Philips 1200, 2200, the 3200, which is this model that I'm testing, then the 4300 and the 5400 on the high end. And if you see the images of them, they pretty much all look the same, and that's because they mostly are on the inside. The ease of use is the same, the grinder and the heating system is also the same. But what is really different is the drink options. And so you'll notice that when you get to the 3200, you actually have a pretty big step up where you get the six drink options, including the latte. And then you also get to customize each drink with these three different settings. And I really like that. And actually, the 4300 goes one step higher. Now you get another few drink options, and then you get five different settings to customize your drinks. And you even get two user profiles. You have two people each customizing their own drink. And I think that's really important. Like I said earlier, espresso is a really nuanced drink. It's not that simple just push one button and get a perfect drink every time. You do need to adjust the settings depending on the bean you're using, depending on just what kind of flavor you like. And you know, you'll notice most cafes, they don't use super automatic machines. They use semi-automatics because you can have that additional level of control. And so that's why I think if you're going to choose one, you should get the 3200 or the 4300. So I think those have the most control and good options, the best value. Philips also does make 
ones that don't have latte go. They have just a classic milk frother, which is a standard Panarello wand. I don't recommend the classic milk frother. I think the key selling point of this machine is the latte go system. I think it's excellent. And so get the latte go, either this 3200 latte go or the 4300 latte go. And now if you're kind of wondering, you know, I, I've talked about different trade-offs here. Uh, good milks, drinks, maybe not as good of espresso drinks, but very easy to use. So who's this for? Well, I think if you're currently going to the coffee shop every day and getting a latte in the morning or maybe a latte in the morning and a cappuccino in the afternoon, I think this is absolutely for you. Honestly, you're going to pay off this machine in a year just from using it. And it's very easy, very intuitive. There's almost no cleanup. And so that's really what I like is this the intuitive ease of use and then just good milk drinks without any work, which is rare. And so if you want to find these machines, I have links to them in the description below. Also, I have a link to our article, which actually has more detail on what I talked about today on this machine. That's also in the description below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit like and also hit subscribe to find future videos too.